That's great, but today it's all quadratic formula. So we're going to go over all the methods, and then at the end you can choose your favorite one. So today I'm doing nothing but quadratic formula. <coughs> Leah was asking me if we were going to sing the song. I said, well, I don't know if I'll make you sing it again this year like I did last year or not, but I can't do the quadratic formula without singing the song, so I'll be singing it as I write it. When I was writing it there in my head, I was singing it. So yeah, you'll, you'll get to hear it. What's the song? Next week we'll say it'll be plus and minus the square. Y'all learn that at Benton? That's, oh Lord, y'all are deprived kids over there. <laughs> Pop goes the weasel. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, All right. So, if um, one thing to remember where your A, B, and C come from, I know you know this and you remember it, but it's standard form of a quadratic is AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. So that's where the A, B, and C come from that you plug in over here. Notice it's set equal to zero. That's going to sometimes not be the case, and you're going to have to work on it and get it set equal to zero before you can take your A, B, and C. Okay, so it's always got to be set equal to zero. All right. So... We got what we need on that page so I can throw us a new page and do a problem. All right, I got 4x squared minus 11x minus 3 is equal to 0. All right, directions just say to solve. So remember we can have no solution, one solution, or two solutions. We talked about that yesterday. This uh, is set equal to 0, so there's no preliminary work to do on it. It's already ready, set equal to 0. So tell me what is in my A spot. Four, very good. The A is always the one that's squared. What is in my B spot? <coughs> negative 11. Good job. In my C, negative 3. You take the sign that's in front of it with them. So we start here and we got X equals negative B. Now that B is negative 11. Negative B means the opposite. Very good, Sydney. So that's 11. Plus or minus the square root. B squared. Now, I get aggravated, and you all remember me telling you this in algebra 2. I get aggravated when people don't know that any time you square a number, it's positive. Because a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So if you just type it in your calculator like that, it does, your calculator does 11 squared and then makes it a negative. So if you don't know, if you've got a brain fart and you can't remember that anything squared is a positive and you've got to type it in your calculator, you better put it in parentheses. But this first one will always end up being positive. All right, so we got negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4. It's always a 4 times our a <coughs> times our c all over 2a. All right, and there's lots of different ways of typing all that in. I always try to break down underneath the radical as much as I can just in my head or pencil and paper. I know negative 11 squared is 121. Here, the way I go on this, I got this minus sign and a negative. So I know that negative times a negative is going to make a positive there. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. All over 8. So that gets me 11 plus or minus the square root of 169. All over 8. 169, we started off with a good one. That's a perfect square. That's 13. Okay, so I've got to do, remember we got that plus or minus. I've got to do 11 plus 13 and divide it by 8. And 11 minus 13 and divide it by 8. 
So 11 plus 13 is 24 divided by 8 is 3. 11 minus 13 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 8 is just negative 1 fourth. I'll put two commas there, you big goober. Comma, comma, what does that mean? You're a goober. <laughs> there you go. All right, you will, you always do that differently than I do, so I suspect you'll do it the same. Most of the time, what ends up happening with y'all, and I don't care, I don't have a problem, y'all just do everything under the radical in your calculator. That's what, that's fine with me, okay? So just make sure that you're able to get the, the same thing as I did, however you attack that. minus 4 equals 0. This time I'm going to uh, label stuff with you and then you're going to finish it. What will your A on this one be? 6. six. What will your B be? Negative 5. Negative 5. And your C? Negative 4. Negative 4. Okay, I want you to solve that. Go. I'll give you a hint. Both of your answers are fractions. It's okay. You can do it. C equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4. C all over 2. Okay. singing that song over and over and over again that I didn't have to Maybe I'll find a play in there. And I'm like, when I watch it, I'm like, how many times am I going to say that it's going? All right, everybody, y'all got it? Need another second? Okay, no problem at all.
once you get that 11, yes. And then negative 4 divided by 5. Yeah, because wouldn't that be 5 minus 1? No. What's 6 minus 6? 5 minus 1? She said, oh, she said, oh, it's not like it's just like it's just like it's just like Okay, I set it up for you there, so let me simplify underneath my radical. I got x is 5 plus or minus. Uh, 4 of 6 is 24. 24 times 4 is 96. So I've got 25 plus 96. 121 over 12. The square root of 121 is 11. So I have to do 5 plus 11 and divide it by 12, and 5 minus 11 and divide it by 12. 5 plus 11 is 16. 16 over 12, take a 4 out, is 4 thirds. 5 minus 11 is negative 6, and negative 6 over 12 is negative half. How'd you do? Band tabulastic? What? we're not set equal to zero. Now when you move it over, make sure you put it in standard form. Okay, so that would actually come between the two that are already over there, right? Yep. So we're going to have 2x squared minus 14x plus 19 is equal to zero. Okay, now our a is what? 2, our b, negative 14, and our c, 19. Now this one is the, going to be the first one that we looked at today that is not perfect squares. So I'll go ahead and work through this one with you. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. Okay, right by this now. Oh, over 2A. Okay, I skipped some steps. You all right? I got negative B, which is positive 14. Negative 14 squared is 196. 2A, 2 times 2 is 4. So I skipped some steps on that. All right, so this gets me 14 plus or minus the square root of 196. I only have one minus sign there, so that's going to stay a minus. 4 times 2 is 8, and 19 times 8 is 152. So I subtract those, and y'all are skipping a lot of that because y'all are doing it in your calculator, but I like to get a mental math workout. 44. All right, 6 plus 2 is 4, 9 plus 5 is 4. All right, so on the previous two that we had when we got there, we had a perfect square. 44 is not a perfect square. I know 6 squared is 36 and 7 squared is 49, so I skip 44. So i got to find the biggest perfect square that will go into 44 and break that down. Any ideas? Yep, this is the same as 4 times 11. So the square root of 4 is 2. So we're going to have 14 plus or minus 2 square roots of 11 over 4. Now we're not going to be able to get this down to two normal answers. It's still going to be in radical form. So I can leave it with the plus minus, but I can't leave that. That can go farther. How does that go farther? How does it simplify? Not a 4, but you're on the right row. 2. Two is what will go evenly into all of them. So divide them all by two, that would be seven plus or minus one square root of 11 over two. That'd be it. Well, you could, uh, it's, that's, there's other answers that mean the same. You could put seven over two plus or minus the square root of 11 over two. You could write it with a plus sign and write it with a minus sign. All of these things here are the same, just different ways of writing it. Yeah. Woo-hoo! That's a wrap. Oh, we got a couple more. <laughs> Good 
trap. The trap. Alright, got what you need off that one? the quadratic formula and we're not anywhere near in standard form. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, they're right over here on the side. That binomial on the left, we got to FOIL that. We're trying to get it in the standard form, so that's going to get us, first is x squared. I'm going to see if I can skip some steps with you. Outer is 1x and inner is 5x, so that gets me 6x. And then last is 5. And she already knows what I gotta do next. It's still not equal to zero, so I gotta move that 2x over. So that's right, Katie, when I subtract that, gets me x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to zero. Now, at first glance, I'm like, well, that'll factor, because five, I could make factors five is one and five, so I can make that add to four, but no. Because to make a positive 5, it would have to be a positive 1 and a positive 5, or a negative 1 and a negative 5. That adds to 6, and that adds to negative 6. I have to add a negative 4. So I can't factor even though today's not the factoring day. A is what? 1. I haven't had one of those yet, and that's usually the most common. B is negative 4, and C is positive 5. So here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Alright, I see something fishy already. Anybody else see it? Never get a negative under the That's exactly right, Miss Leah. You're going to get a negative underneath the radical. Because right here, 4 times 1 is 5 is 20. So you got 16 minus 20. So we've got 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. Ah, good, Austin. Thankfully, we know what to do with that negative 4. When we have a negative underneath there, that's an I. And better news, 4 is a perfect square. So the I comes out and the square root of 4 is 2. So 2I two comes out of that, right? Right. So we got x equals 4 plus or minus 2I all over 2. <coughs> Circle that. No. no. Take a 2 out. It will reduce. Divide it all by 2. X equals 2. Plus or minus 1i. I like that. I circle that. Some people will write 2 plus i, 2 minus i. It's the same thing. There's not any other way to write that. <coughs> Say what, Will? <laughs> I like it. I don't know. No, you will before this is over. <laughs> Alright, uh, last stuff that we got to look at today. It's called the discriminants. Let me see if I can spell M I N A N T. The discriminant is the part just underneath the radical. So x equals negative b plus y squared. b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant is only that part. What that's useful for is that tells us what types of answers that we have. If we work out our discriminant and we get a positive answer, which means it would have to be greater than zero, right? That means there will be two <coughs> rational solutions. All right, if we work out the discriminants and we get a positive but not a perfect square, still going to have two real solutions, but they're going to be irrational. So all that means on this one, let me write that this one was a perfect square. Q 
U, left a U out. This is the way when you're greater than zero, that means you're positive. That means your answers are going to be real. They don't have an I in them. If it's a perfect square, it's going to be rational. That means it won't have a square root sign. If it's not a perfect square, it's irrational. That means it's going to have a square root sign. That's what that means. So you might, um, no, you don't have one there. Let me throw a no across that. That one won't have one. This one will. Does that help you any all? Okay. Then if my discriminant is zero, that means I'm only going to have one rational solution. Remember I said we can have two, one, or none? R-A-T-I-O-N. One rational solution. All right. If my discriminant is less than zero, I'm going to have two non-real. That means they're going to have an I in them. Okay? Because every now and then you'll have a problem that says, you don't have to solve it all the way. I don't care what the answers are. Just tell me what kind they are. So then you could take that shortcut instead of doing the whole quadratic formula. You could do that part of it and tell them what kind they are. All right, so have that. So let me get Louise so she can see the bottom. Have that so you can look at it, and then we'll do a problem with it. If the numbers aren't real, why do we have to come up with an I? I don't know. Math. I'm trying to explain how I stepmom, like how I work. She goes... That doesn't make any sense. I was in school 10 years ago. It changed so much. Oh, I was in school more than 10 years ago. We had eyes. Yeah. So she just forgot that. Yeah. All right, we got what we need there. Ready to look at one? Okay, here's how the directions read on this. Tell the number and type of solution for each equation. Tell the number and type of solution. So it doesn't ask me what are the solutions. It doesn't say to solve. I could go ahead and do the whole quadratic formula and get my answers and then look at them and say if they're imaginary or if they're rational or whatever. But I'm going to use just my discriminant here. I still need to know my A, B, and C. So my A is 10, my B is negative 1, and my C is negative 2. So I'm just using b squared minus 4ac, so negative 1 squared minus 4 times 10 times negative 2, right? Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 10 is negative 40. Negative 40 times negative 2 is a positive 80. So I got 81, okay? So I know that that is greater than 0. So they're going to be two real. Is that a perfect square? Yes. So they are going to be two rational solutions. We didn't actually have to find out what they were. We just told that there were two rational solutions. This would be 9 underneath my radical, so I would have um, all over 2a, negative b, plus or minus that. So if I finish that out, so I'd be 10 over 20, and negative 8 over 20, take out a 4, negative 2 fifths. So you just had to figure out, you know, add on the negative B and the 2A on the bottom. So we know it wasn't that much more. All right, let's do one more of those. 16X squared plus 25 equals 40X. The directions are the same. Uh, tell the number and type of solutions. So first thing we've got to do is get that in standard form. What do we do to get in standard form? Out of kids, so we have 16x squared minus 40x plus 25 is equal to 0. What's our A? 16. B. 
C. So B squared minus 4 times A times C. Alright, I've got it all set up. I want you to finish it out and tell me what you get for that piece and then we'll talk about what type of solution that is. need a calculator, but you're not if you use some common sense here. You know 4 squared is 16, but then you square that 0 also, so that would be 1,600. And if you look over here, if you do the 4 times 25 first, you know 4 quarters is a dollar, so that's 100. And then 100 times 16 is 1,600. So you got a 0. When your discriminant was equal to 0, look there and see, that means you have 1 rational solution. So what that would mean in terms of a parabola, because that's what this is, somewhere on that x-axis, it's just sitting on it. It just touched it once. That's what that means. Alright. Tomorrow's stuff looks a little bit, it's got equations, looks a little bit more complicated. Just looking at the first page of it. We'll get that then. Let's see. 